I think I know what that phone call you received earlier was about, and I wanted to say that I'm sorry. What are you sorry about, eh? There's nothing to be sorry about. They'll find Danny. They'd better. Happy birthday. Let me go. Please. My family is wealthy. They can pay you a handsome reward. I used to make $3,000 a day. 3000 And look at me now. Do you think I give a shit about money? Who is Choke? The reason I'm still alive. How old are you turning today? I would have rotted here if he hadn't come with his energy, his pickpocketing techniques, his drivel and his will to live. Do you think Choke is crazy? A total nutball. He must have been hit on the head or something, because he can't remember anything from when he was young. What a shame. Look, wax from the candles has dripped on the cake. Sometimes he remembers things. Little flashes having to do with the scar on his hand. With the why. Something about some cult. Then he loses it, like now, <laughs> and thinks he's in the past. Funny old bastard, isn't he? Do you really think he wants to kill me? Joke doesn't mess around. For him, this is sacred ground, and you've profaned it. If he decides you should die, you die. Are you the person who brought the toys that are on the platform? Yes. Danny would want toys. Did you know it was his birthday? I'll go pick him up at school. We'll catch the subway at Cadway Station, and I don't want to be late. No overtime today. I'll drop whatever I'm doing and go to meet him. Happy birthday. What did you do before you lived here? Me? I set prices for things. Companies used to pay me a fortune for me to tell them if something was expensive or cheap. If it was worth buying or selling at a certain price. I worked a lot. Too much. It wasn't worth it. Is your name really Boris? You don't have an accent. I don't want people to remember my real name. I hate names. If Choke calls me Boris, I'm Boris. And many happy returns. I'm the heir to White Enterprises, and someday it'll all be mine. Help me escape and I'll make you rich. I don't want to be rich. There's only one thing I want, and you can't give it to me. Not you or anyone else. But he will turn up. Make a wish. I can help you, Boris. My group works to give people like you a future. No. Anyway, aren't you rich? Why do you help homeless people? I like doing things for myself. Someday, when the White Empire is mine, I'll cover all the cost of the children of Don Quixote and of a thousand other associations. But it isn't mine yet, and I can only do so much. Is Choke the one murdering the hobos? What kind of question is that? Choke? A hobo killer? What if it's me? Or you? Would you like a piece of cake? What do these mannequins in the hall symbolize? Ask Choke. I understand they're his fellow cult members. Didn't I tell you that Choke was in a cult? Are you coming to...
call for you on this phone, Boris. Hello? Where is Danny? Where? No, I don't read the papers. What happened at Cadway Station? No. It's not him. That child is not my Danny. It's not him. You understand? That is not my son! Well, keep looking, and call me when you find him. Not someone else. Him! I'm watching the van, man, and it's just that... Come, Cooper. But didn't you want me... You're crazy and armed, you hear me? Be careful. Come on, Henry, no way I'm falling for that. The time's come, heretic. Huh? Prepare to die. <sighs> Why don't you make a torch? Oh, yeah, now I remember, because you don't know how! Look, everybody, at the idiot who can't figure out how to make a torch! But no laughing, because it's pathetic! And he's a scumbag! You're a scumbag, aren't you, Cooper? You're pathetic, and you're a scumbag, right? Huh? Mr. Scumbag!
What on God's green earth are you trying to do, Cooper? Make a torch? A torch? And how do you intend to keep the rag from falling off the bat, scumbag? It's not big enough to tie around the end! What on God's green earth are you trying to do? Uh, and how do you in- Playing with fire, Cooper? Are you scared of the dark? Do you want me to change your sheets? Or would you rather I peed in your bed to save you the time, scumbag? Cooper, you scumbag! Why did you hit Johnson, huh? He said what about your mother? There's probably some truth in it. And it's about time you learned to think, instead of resorting to violence all the time. You are pathetic, Cooper. After cleansing my soul of lies of the malignant one, I have filled it with discernment and have reached a decision. The heretic Henry White shall be subjected to the judgment of God and thereby shall be flung into the well of truth. If the rats, those diabolical beings that inhabit it, 
perceive traces of divine goodness in Henry White's soul, they will rise up against him, tearing into his mortal flesh with their nails and teeth until he bleeds to death. In this case, we will rejoice at having led the soul of a just man to heaven. But if on the contrary, Henry White is as diabolical as they are, they will treat him with respect. And in that case, I myself shall, with a single shot, send his abominable, detestable, and repugnant soul to hell. Nevertheless, before flinging him into the well, I shall grant him enough time to ask forgiveness of the High One and prepare his soul in peace. We pray silently for your poor soul, Henry White. Wedge, huh? Even if we had the biggest one in the world, we wouldn't be able to get it into your head. Ain't that right, scumbag? Souls from paradise, look all of you upon Henry White, the heretic who tread on holy ground because he is a scumbag, right, Cooper? Now what are you gonna do for your friends? Take a fix in the well like a sissy boy? 
or are you gonna act like a man for once? Come on, shoot! Henry? There aren't any rats. They were laughing at us. At Henry White. What are we gonna do with them? Henry, you okay? We're not gonna burn these ones. Mr. White, your six o'clock is here. It's John yesterday. Thank you, Lori. My compliments to your stylist. Great suit. I picked it out, Mr. White. Ah, then my compliments to Human Resources for hiring you. You hired me yourself, Mr. White. Oh, I see. Tell him to come right in, please. Mr. White will see you now, Mr. Yesterday. Thank you. Come over here, John. Have a look at this sunset. My advice to you is, if in your next life you come back as a filthy rich businessman, remember to get an office with a view like this. It's the only part that's really worth it in the end. I can't even remember what I've done in this life, Mr. White. Henry. Call me Henry. You used to call me that. Tell me, John. Have you managed to remember anything about your past on your own? No. Well, sometimes I get... Small flashes of random images, sounds. It's happened three times now. Watching a movie, looking at my hand, seeing a bluebird. Curious, isn't it? Tell me more. What was it you remembered when you were watching that movie? It took place in Paris. Suddenly, I saw, I don't know, a sort of antique shop. A girl. What came to mind when you looked at your hand? Well, it was actually the scar on my hand. The image of a strange person appeared in my mind. Some kind of priest in a church. He was talking about killing someone. Me. What happened when you looked at this blue bird? It perched on the windowsill in the hospital. Suddenly I saw myself with a beard and long hair in a blizzard. How is your mother doing? She has a slight cold. She seems like a good person. She's been telling me a lot about my life, but I can't seem to remember anything about it. Not a thing. Give her my best. And let me pick your brains for a moment. What has she told you? You never used to talk about yourself in the old days. What has your mother told you about your childhood? All there is to tell. Only child, shy, few friends, obedient, athletic. I just wish I could remember. What do you know about your youth? I threw myself into my schoolwork. Apparently, I'm smart. I have a master's in the history of religion from my mother. She's a worldwide authority on the history of satanic cults. The terrible thing is, is that I don't remember a single thing I learned in all those years in the university, except what was in the books you sent me in the hospital and what my mother has been telling me. Do you have a partner? My mother says I had a girlfriend a long time ago. Uh, Suzanne. Now I'm single, it seems. What has she told you about your likes? This is strange. 
She told me that I never liked grapes, but the other day I tried one and it was delicious. Interesting. To what extent are our likes and dislikes conditioned by our memories? By the way, I love grapes. Everything all right at the hospital? Yes, of course. Thank you for taking care of the bill. I didn't do it. My money did. Sometimes it gets tired of rotting in the bank. Oh, goodness, John. I haven't even offered you a chair. I'm very sorry for what happened, John. Very sorry. I can't help thinking that it's all my doing. On the contrary, I've come here to thank you. And to get some answers, I imagine. What do you want to know? What connects me to you? There's a lot, John. You were working for me when you tried to kill yourself. You got too involved in the investigation. You lost your perspective. Lori has the contract, by the way. Ask for her copy on your way out if you want. I want to know who I am. I'm not God, John. If you want to solve that mystery, go to a church and pray. I can only resolve human dilemmas. Why did you send those books on satanic cults to me in the hospital? To help your mother re-educate you and with an eye to a matter that we had between us. One that we still have. What did my investigation consist of? I hired you to get information about the Order of the Flesh, a satanic cult from the 15th century, in the hope that this would help us trap a present-day killer. My own investigation wasn't going anywhere. What had you discovered before hiring me? The Order of the Flesh was founded in 1463 by an ex-priest named Hines de Arduña. Tell me about this killer. He's been killing hobos for years. First he only burned them, but then his modus operandi evolved. How did the hobo killer evolve? He stopped burning his victims and started torturing them using satanic rituals. What led you to link him to this cult? At a certain point, he started carving a sort of Y into the bodies of his victims, the symbol of the Order of the Flesh. Why are you so interested in capturing him? For a time, I worked as a volunteer in an NGO called the Children of Don Quixote. They help the homeless. Over the years, I stopped working with them because there's something that can help them more than I can. My money. It's been covering all their expenses since my parents died and I took over White Enterprises. I'm not going to allow anyone to keep attacking these people, John. And you're going to help me. What was the Order of the Flesh about? We know very little. They worshipped the devil and combined alchemy with torture in search of God knows what, until the Inquisition began to persecute them. Did the Inquisition put a stop to the Order of the Flesh? In 1498, when it seemed like Cardinal Cisneros, the Grand Inquisitor, had them cornered, they disappeared from the map. They evaporated. No one knows how or to where. Why did you hire me? I hired your mother first, John. But after a while, she came to a dead end. I didn't know where to go from there. She said that if anyone could get further, it would be you. What did I find out? You started doing some research in the archives at the University of Salamanca in Spain, and you found something curious. A missive from the guard Captain Miguel de Somosierra to Cardinal Cisneros, written on the 31st of August, 1501. What did the letter say? He stated that on that very morning his troops had traveled to the temple where they suspected the order was meeting, that they went in and interrupted a demonic ritual, that they killed all its members without mercy, and that finally they burned the church, reducing it to rubble and the ashes of satanic cadavers. The letter didn't say anything else? Yes, the captain congratulated him for the tip that led them to the temple. Literally, he said, Thankfully, your excellency saw the relationship between the order of the flesh and the holy cathedral of Our Lady of Paris that led us to reveal the evil in an apparently holy church. What relationship is there between Notre Dame and the Order? That was the next and final step in your investigation. Paris. What did I find out in Paris? I don't know. You disappeared there for 15 days when you finally called. You were very distressed. You told me that you found something very important and that you couldn't tell me over the telephone. 
So I flew to Paris. Why didn't I tell you what I found out? Because when I arrived at your hotel, you had attempted suicide. You were dying. You had swallowed mercury. Plus, you had cut your hand, drawing the symbol of the order of the flesh on your skin. It looked like a Y. How did you know it was a suicide? You left a note. Forgive me, Henry, but to get to the bottom of this, first I must die. Now you know everything, John. Talk to Laurie. Have her give you your tickets. What tickets? Ah, did I forget to mention that? You're leaving for Paris this afternoon. That's okay with you, right? Yeah, Henry. I need to know who I am. Exactly, John. Your father would be proud of you. He just went in. You're sure the suite does not bring back any memories, Monsieur Yesterday? No, I'm sorry. Dommage. Well, call me if you need anything at all. Dinner with a dot entertainment. You get my drift? Blonde, brunette, bold, black, white, young, oldies, sex pots, fat ladies, dwarves, hussies, spinsters, natural, surgically enhanced, clean, or filthy. And 10% discount if I get to watch. Okay? Thank you, Albert. I'll... I'll keep it in mind. <laughs>